Well, g'day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, you guys must think I must live in the shed and wear the same clothes every episode. It's <laughs> not quite like that. I, I just happen to be banging out a, a couple of intros and, and things like that all at the same time. So I've got these movies uh, all being recorded and, and um, edited very close together. So, <laughs> anyway, enough of, enough of that. What we're going to do is we're going to do a very quick, probably a two episode uh, project, I, I hope we can only contain it to two. I was watching Tom Lipton, Ox Tools, the other day on, on YouTube, and he made this fixture for chamfering um, your parts, and I was going to make one, but an earlier vid video, um, Stephen Gotswinter made one using a router and a carbide cutter and that was what I was going to make. And then Tom Lipton came up with this video and I thought, well shit, that's a, that's a good way to do it. So that's what we're going to do. So he emailed me um, the, the sketch, the drawing. Now of course his one is to suit the surface grinder. So, and my one I'm going to use in our tool and cutter grinder. So we've got this chunk of steel, so we'll, we'll get it all machined up. It'll be close to the drawing, it won't be exact, because my chunk of, chunk of steel that I have isn't quite tall enough in the other direction, and plus we have to put a different mounting base plate on it. So we'll get over to the mill and we'll start hogging off some material on this. And that was the other thing, that's right, the tool and cutter grinder. What, what this project was destined for. Uh, I had a couple of comments um, in previous videos, people asking me about the tool and cutter grinder and would I, you know, I did I plan on doing any, any videos about it. Well actually I do. So once we've got this out of the way and I've got a couple of angle plates I've got to do a bit of machining on. Prior, uh, they're just weld prep so I can get them welded. That's another project down the road which is only a quickie. We're going to hop over onto our tooling cutter grinder. So we're going to have to make up some of the tooling required to be able to use the grinder to its full function which is just basically some tool rests and um, a couple of minor things. And then I know a lot of people have got tool and cutter grinders, whether they be like the big full size um, ones or there's probably a few people kicking around that have a similar thing to what I have or it could be like the D-bit D -bit grinder style. The basic cutting, grinding angles and all that, it's much of a muchness regardless of what machine as far as I'm aware of anyway. So what we're going to do is once we've completed all of the fixtures that we need to grind the cutters, we're going to go through this step by step. We're going to drag out one of my old apprentice books and we'll go through all of the basics on tool and cutter grinding, uh, sharpening the flutes and the ends of the cutters and how to offset the wheel to get your relief angles and, and that sort of carry on. So. That'll be an up and coming video anyway, so anyway, let's go to the mill and we'll start machining this block. Okay, so we're just going to sit our block in the vise, and all we want to do at this stage is just square up the ends of it. We're not interested in the sides yet. We'll square the ends up, and then we can scribe our lines and where we're going to machine to. using the square just to get it close there's no real no real tight tolerance on this job so it's good Knip it down now I haven't put any you can use a bit of aluminium wire or something behind your movable jaw, but for this there's no, there's no need whatsoever to do that for our first side, so... Let's get her over and... So 
only a light cut we need to take off, so... take the block straight down to two inches first, two inches wide and we'll square off the base and then we'll lay out our cutout that we have to do. Okay what we're going to do is we'll take enough material off this side so we're clear of this radius. So we're looking about 10 mil to come off will be fine. I'd rather do it too, probably with this mill in a, in a more of a series of lighter, faster cuts than um, less heavier cuts. As it's, she's not a heavy duty mill, our Bridgeport, but she'll get she'll get it done. She's pretty happy at those feed rates and depth of cut, so we're just running on a two and a half millimeter depth of cut and a hundred and twenty five millimeter a minute feed rate, running the cutter on eight hundred rpm so she seems quite comfortable doing that, so we'll just plod along with that now this cutter it's an American sun uh, it's a sixty millimeter cutter a neutral rate cutter. I should get a positive rate cutter, a small one for this machine, it would um, perform very well on it. And of course our newly made face malaba. So anyway we'll continue hogging this out and bring you back.
that's our block all milled down the size. So we're two inches wide as pretty close to the drawing. And the drawing, not the one Tom's one on the drawing gives it four inches wide, but due to the size of our material, ours is just under three inches. But that'll be fine for our application and we have a base plate to go underneath it. So what we'll do now is we'll um, drill and tap six holes in the, in the bottom of it and that will mount our base plate. So in the, in the process of machining all that down to size, like there's a lot of chips came off the material and uh, they were coming off pretty hot. So they were all sticking to me clothes. So I went down and invested into one of these dust coats. And these are great because the chips don't stick. So we had a win there. That'll keep the wife off me back for their washing machine getting filled up with loose chips. So winner. So we'll go and we'll get these holes drilled and tapped and then we'll cut the big V-groove out. Now we've got six holes to go in here. They are uh, 1032 UNF. Well, that's neither here nor there, so uh, three-eighths of an inch in. Now, an inch and a quarter centers. So we'll come along to inch and five eight. Inch and a quarter, one, two, threes, yeah, inch and five eight. Now they're three inch hole centers. Okay, we'll take this over to the mill and we'll get drilling. I picked up one of these things the other day, a centering scope. Well, as far as I'm concerned with these things, I think you spend more time piss farting around calibrating it than actually getting your job on centre. So an edge finder is way quicker. Probably might have specific applications but I don't know what yet so I thought it might have been a quick and easy way to to centre onto a scribe line but honestly it's just too much mucking around so the edge finder wins if you've got machine surfaces to work off over this any time. Okay, so now we just add on half the diameter of the edge finder plus our distance in.
Okay, I'll do the rest and bring you back. Right, that's our holes drilled and tapped. We ended up doing a quarter UNC and I only did four, not six. There's no need whatsoever to do six. It's just a base plate that holds this thing down. So what we'll do now is we'll mark out. We have this V groove in here to mark out. And of course, because our the height of our one is 2.815 instead of 4 inches, we'll start the bottom of the V groove will be 0.815 off the bottom of the base instead of 2 inches. So I've just set the vernier to 815. And this is not common practice for me to use my vernier as a scriber, but if I had a surface plate set up and a height gauge set up, I would use that. So we just need to come up from there at 45 degrees. If I can find my scriber. Here we are. Now, what other dimensions can we pick up off here? Okay, so that's 45 degrees for a total length of 2 inches. That's it. So we can. Oh, we've got this other recess to go in the back as well. So we might as well mark that out while we're here. So we'll get this blued up. Before we blew it up, let's see if we can get a shot of this surface, the um, this cutter left on this. Part. It's almost like a ground finish. And that's the uh, S-Car face mill. Very happy with it. So I'll blue the back up with a sharpie. Now we're looking at for depth 1.75 inches. So width he's got 5.13 inches why 5.13 I don't know it's a bit of an oddball so I think we'll just make it um, five inches so that's all right just searching for me other ruler Just go two and a half inches either side of the center line.
goes. More Sharpie. Cuts in for a depth of Then we just need to transfer these lines down. Okay, so that there will be our pocket, the recess where the grinding wheel sits in, so we'll mill all that out. And then we have the V. So, probably we'll look at what are we going to do first. I'd say we'll probably... If we do the V first, it's going to really restrict us for clamping, for cutting out this pocket. So the way the block is now, it's a real easy setup just to clamp it in the vise and chop this pocket out. Then we can set it back up on its edge on a couple of parallels and chomp out the V groove. So I think we'll do that. So we'll set it down onto a couple of parallels. Both tight, that's good. Okay, now we're going to use our face mill and we'll get what we can with this and then we'll switch over to a indexable carbide end mill to clean up around the edges.
Okay, well that was quick and painless. So what we'll do now is we'll swap over to an indexable carbide end mill and we'll clean up all the edges. Just one thing to take note, that's barely warm that. It's just lukewarm. Cutter's quite warm, but the job barely, barely warm, lukewarm, if that. A lot of heat's gone out in those chips.